there's actually three reasons why Fujimoto replaced Denji. One thing that a lot of people underestimate is just how character-driven Chainsaw Man really is. And when you read Fujimoto's newer one-shots, you can see that these are also very character-driven stories. Which is why it's a big deal that Fujimoto shifted focus from Denji to a brand new character. A character that we had quite literally never seen before. Obviously, this decision implies that there's a deliberate reason why Fujimoto did what he did. So in this video, I'm going to explain the three reasons why he needed to do this in part two. The first reason is one that I'm sure we can all guess right away. Because if you ask yourself, why does the story have a new character, it's kind of in the word new. Whether it's intended or not, when you change the face of a story, you give it a new look. Naturally, people begin to look at it in a new way based on that character. If you're a fan of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, then this should be something you're already pretty familiar with. For example, just the shift from part one to part two is pretty major. The shift from the noble Jonathan to the mischievous Joseph sets a new tone in part two, shifting from a very tropey good versus evil story to a story where the main character often runs away from fights and uses underhanded tricks to beat his opponents. In short, it changes how people view JoJo's. So we can assume that Fujimoto wanted to give Chainsaw Man a new look in part two. But the question becomes, what exactly was he trying to change? Well, one thing that immediately stands out is the shift from a male character to a female character, which could have been for a number of reasons, but we have to remember that this is Denji we're talking about. And what's the first thing everyone notices or remembers about Denji? It's how he always seems to be chasing after girls. If it's not Makima, it's Himeno. If it's not Himeno, it's Reze. So much so that it's almost impossible to mention Chainsaw Man and not think of Denji literally barking at girls. Naturally, this immediately changed when we moved to Asa. To be fair, it's not like she's completely different. We see her being jealous over a couple at school in Chapter 1. But it's obviously quite different from barking at every girl in sight. There's still that desperation, but it's a lot more reserved. As a result, part two retains that focus on relationships and isolation without it always having to revolve around sexuality. Another way Fujimoto changed things up was by giving us a look into the main character's conscience. It's something I'm gonna dive a bit deeper into when we get to the third reason why he replaced Denji, but it's something I have to point out right away because it's an obvious change and yet one that still gets overlooked. Denji did not have this kind of introspection. He would reflect on the events of the story, but very rarely would he have an extensive inner dialogue. Now, it's a regular thing to see Asa and Yoru discuss something that just happened in the story. It might seem like a minor change, but it really does change the tone of the story. But like I said, we'll get more into why that is later in the video. On that note, let's talk about the second reason why Fujimoto replaced Denji. Actually, before I do that, make sure to like the video if you've been enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. Now, the second reason Fujimoto replaced Denji is one that might seem obvious now, but wasn't really so obvious right after Part 1 ended. Because when you see Denji at the end of Part 1, and you see that we're getting Chainsaw Man Part 2, and it's going to be about Denji in school, you're like, okay, sweet, so we're going to get more Denji. When that happens, you very quickly forget that Denji's story just ended. Or at the very least, the arc that was established for him in Part 1 just ended. Like any character in a story, the main character can go through many arcs, but they generally go through one overarching arc throughout the course of the story. They start at one point, and by the end of that arc, they go through some sort of fundamental change. So when the story continues into a new part, and that character is no longer the protagonist, it's because that particular arc is complete. There's nothing else to add to it. Sometimes you literally can't add to it because the character's dead, like Jonathan in part one. But while we're talking about JoJo's, let's look at the main characters that follow Jonathan. Obviously, Jonathan dies in part one and Joseph takes over in part two. But when we move to part three, Joseph, as geriatric as he is, is still very much alive. And yet, he's no longer the main character. Part of that is because of what I said about arcs. Joseph's character arc, as it's established in Part 2, is complete by the time we get to Part 3. By this time, he's matured both literally and figuratively as a character. And this is what happens with Denji in Part 1. 
Denji starts out not really as mature as he should be for his age because of the rough childhood he's had. So a large part of his growth in part one is gaining back the childhood he's lost and figuring out what it is he wants in life. He starts with very basic desires, questions those desires throughout part one, and by the time it ends, comes back full circle and realizes he just wants to do whatever it is he wants. Oversimplifying things a bit here, but that's the gist of it. That is how Denji matures, and that is how his arc as established in part one is completed. So part of why Fujimoto replaced Denji in part two is because of that maturity. Sure, Denji still has a lot to figure out, but he's largely fleshed out in part one to the point where there isn't a ton left to explore. Floor. If Fujimoto wanted to keep Denji as the main character, then he would have to give him some kind of new character arc, some new struggle, or some new fundamental question. So the question I'm sure immediately comes to mind is, why not? Why not just do that? The answer to that question brings us to the third reason Fujimoto replaced Denji, and this reason kind of blends in with the other two. The first reason I said was to give Chainsaw Man a new look, a fresh perspective. The second reason is because Denji's character arc, his story, is complete. Naturally, when one character's story is finished, a new character's story begins. Which might sound pretty self-explanatory, but to really drive this point home, I'd like to make another comparison to JoJo's. And for this, we're actually going to move on to part 4. In part 4, Joseph and Jotaro return as supporting characters, having both previously been main characters, and now Josuke is the main character. One question you might have is why not just keep Jotaro as the main character? Which is a fair question considering Jotaro is the one that comes to Morio. Jotaro is the one with all the information, and Jotaro is still the most powerful character in the main group. Like I said, part of this is because, like with Joseph and Jonathan, Jotaro's story was in part 3, and that story is complete. Part 4 is not the grand global adventure that part 3 was. Part 4 is a story about community and small town mysteries, and that is not Jotaro's story. That is Josuke's story. The character who grew up in Morio, who hangs out with everyone in Morio, and lives it every day. You could not have that story without it being told from the perspective of a character like Josuke. So that's what I mean when I say one character's story is over and a new character's story is beginning. The author wants to change the kind of story they're telling, and so they use a new character with that new perspective to do just that. And for those of you who are like, well, that doesn't really apply to Chainsaw Man because it's still the same story, let me just stop you right there. Like I said earlier, Chainsaw Man retains a lot of what fans enjoyed about Part 1 and Part 2, but we're only like 30 chapters in and Part 2 already feels very different. And that's because we're no longer following Denji's story. Denji is still a major player, but we are following him from the outside. This is now Asa's story. What does that mean? Well, unfortunately, it's hard to give a definitive answer. It's easy to do that with JoJo's because part one through part whatever is already finished. Part two of Chainsaw Man is still running, so you can't be like, well, when you look back, this is what it's really about. What we can do, however, is point out what's already changed in the story. One change is something I mentioned earlier in the video. Before, I mentioned how there's a lot more of introspection from Asa than there was with Denji. Of course, this gives us more inner dialogue, but the big thing is what she actually talks about when she does this. Right now, Asa is struggling with trying to define a good person versus a bad person, and trying to justify killing other people. This isn't something that was ever really focused on in part one. They definitely talked about good people versus bad people, and what that really even means, but not to the level of part two. The big focus in part one is Denji's values as well as his identity based on those values. And identity was also a big theme with a lot of the other characters. Identity and individual values are still very much a part of part two. But now there's also more focus on the good versus evil stuff and when you can kill someone and all that. If I were asked to break it down, I'd say part one focused on morality and mixed in some ethics, while part two focuses on both. Like I've been saying, it's not a huge change, but it does set a new tone. It changes the kinds of conversations the characters have, and as a result, changes the overall feel of the story. So, at this point, these are the three reasons it seems like Fujimoto replaced Denji. First, it set a new tone for the story. Second, it indicated that Denji's character arc in part one was more or less settled. And finally, it indicated that this is now Asa's story rather than Denji's. 
Now, I've offered one explanation for what that last part means, but obviously there's probably some other ones I missed. So now I'd like to hear what you think. What do you think is different about Oss's story? Or is it really just the same? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. And if you'd like another Chainsaw Man discussion like this one, then make sure to check out my video on what Chainsaw Man does better than JJK. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.